Hello, my name's Andrew Wilkinson, and in this just-in-time video short, we're going to look at common login errors. Login errors are issues that are typically very simple to resolve, so they're not big issues usually, and yet they can result in a lot of wasted time um, during which an agent could be productive, um, where your troubleshooting resources are being wasted working with a slow agent to resolve something that's not even really an actual issue, and just general confusion. So we've provided in this just-in-time video short a list of the most common misconfigurations that can help you diagnose the problem faster and perhaps distribute so that you can solve this faster. Okay, so some of the most common misconfigurations that we encounter, and thankfully the both the .NET client and desktop initial login configurations aren't that fast, um, are first off, you always want to make sure the IC server host name is correct. Now perhaps the agents won't know this, this is why it's good to make a profile, but if they are entering it in manually, they will have to enter it in correctly. Also, if they're using an IC username and password, they need to make sure that their IC username is correct, that it exists in the system, that they have the ability to log into the client via licensing, and also that their password is correct and that it's the most recent one. If they're using Windows authentication, they must be logged in as that Windows user. And the station name also needs to be correct. If they are trying to log into a station that doesn't exist, naturally they won't be able to. Okay, so let's look into the product. Okay, so the first issue I spoke of um, was the IC server name. However, we're going to actually start at the back. Um, you see here, I already have an error pulled up. I tried to log in to a station name that's invalid. The reason for that is I had tried to log into a station called Clients. There was just a simple S there. The specified station name is invalid. Now, perhaps the station actually doesn't exist, which in this case it doesn't. You could go into Interaction Administrator and see that there is no station called Clients. Okay, so I delete the S and it would log in. Similarly though, if it was a misspelling, anything like that, the capitalization doesn't matter. Another common mistake that can happen is if people have selected this computer, that will automatically look for a workstation with the same name as whatever the host name of the Windows machine that they are on is. If the station has a separate name that you've configured in administrator, naturally that won't work. And you will get the specified station name is invalid. So all you have to do is put in a valid one and it will work. Another common mistake, as I've mentioned, is the server host name. Now, typically, agents on the floor do not understand how Windows server host names work or how networks work, so they really have no idea what this field means. Now, again, my best advice is to have a host, uh, to have a profile set up so that they don't need to know this. However, if they do have to punch it in, make sure it's clear to them that they have to punch in exactly as their instructions tell them and not with any spaces. If you do it with a space and you hit log on, okay, our server in this instance is IC1, not IC space 1. It's going to connect. An error occurred while attempting to connect to the server. The supplied host name, IC space 1, could not be resolved. At first glance, you might think this is right. No, you need to clear the space. So that's another very common one. Next, if you are using Windows authentication, okay, it's going to use whatever the user that you have logged into Windows as. Now you can verify this in the users container of Interaction Administrator. If you're logged in to Windows as IC admin and the IC admin Windows account has not been linked to Active Directory in Interaction Administrator, which we can verify. So I've pulled up Interaction Administrator, and look, there's an IC user named IC Admin. This is not that IC Admin. This is the Windows account, hence the checkbox, Use Windows Authentication. The way we check for that, and let me expand this here, is look under NT Domain User. That means that we have linked the IC username to the network account, IC admin. So that means 
that if I had logged into this machine as the network account jim.carter, okay, it would log me in under Jim Carter. Similarly, if I logged into a network account for Andrew Wilkinson, there is no user in IA linked to an Andrew Wilkinson. You can see here, so it would not work. Tying in with this, if you deselect the checkbox for use Windows authentication and you put in a username that is not valid, so for instance, Andrew.Wilkinson, doesn't matter if I put in a password of any kind, this will not work. That user does not exist. So the authentication process failed because that password is not valid for that user. Why? because the specified username is invalid, and we tell you that. So again, making sure that they're typing in their username properly, making sure the IC username exists, which remember is this column, making sure that their password is correct, which you can change by going into their user object and resetting the password or changing it if you want, making sure that if they're using Windows authentication, that their IC user that an IC user, excuse me, does in fact have a network account of the same name linked, which again, that's in this column here. Making sure that the workstation they're logging into does exist, okay? And I can go to stations and look, there is one called. When all of these things are correct and you hit login, you will successfully log in as I have just shown. Okay, well, thank you for attending this just-in-time video short. Please make sure to check out our other ones for more useful information. Thank you.